However, there we go. Um, there are a number, a, a little housekeeping detail, there are a number of students here who have submitted requests to speak and it regards a musical theater class and we understand there are some uh, rumors floating around that this class or this program is in danger. If you're here to speak on this program and urge us to continue with it, um, I'm here to tell you there is no plans to cancel it. It is not in danger. I've talked to the college president about this who will nod vigorously and confirm that uh, whatever you're hearing is simply not the case. We welcome you. You're all welcome to stay and speak, but I do want to let you know that that is uh, uh, not an issue that is before us. That is not an issue that's being contemplated. And uh, so, you know, be governed accordingly, but uh, you are certainly welcome to, uh, to come here today and, and address us on this subject or any others. All right, at this point, let me turn to the vice president of the board who is sitting in for the clerk with respect to any actions taken in closed session. We have nothing to read out. Thank you very much. And we will now invite you to stand for an invocation to be led by Trustee Lang, to be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, which I have the privilege of leading. Um, first, let me say that my remarks are much more in the way of reflections rather than an invocation. Uh, yesterday uh, marked a holiday and a remembrance uh, for all of us, for those men and women uh, serving in all branches of the military services who put their lives on the line every day uh, for the freedoms and liberties that we enjoy. We should not take this for granted. It's also important and proper, I think, that we continually remember the less fortunate than us the sick uh, and recovering, including our own trustee Tom Fuentes, uh, the downtrodden and the many who have recently suffered from calamities of nature uh, like hurricanes and typhoons and other forms of tragedy uh, and that we keep them in our hearts and our memories. Finally, is, it is appropriate, especially at this time of the year, that we celebrate those that have achieved a measure of academic success represented by graduation and commencement. And each of us, I think, take pride in the role, small role as it may be, that we play that we have, may have helped facilitate such educational achievements. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, a nation all right, we have a couple of presentations of, of uh, resolutions and also the opportunity to square in our new student trustee who is here tonight, Hana Lee. So we will uh, commence with that shortly. Let's start with the resolutions. And as usual, if the chancellor will join me at the podium and we will uh, ask... Uh, Vice President Will, uh, Williams to fill in for Trustee Fuentes. The first resolution is to Patsy, Patsy Emmert. Emmert. Is Patsy here this evening? Okay. Whereas Patsy Emmert is a Technology Specialist too in the Irvine Valley College Technology Services Department, famous for her positive attitude and humor, and one who diligently to solve problems and make college technology run more smoothly and effectively, bringing all her experience to bear on finding creative solutions that benefit faculty, students, and their classrooms. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees and the Chancellor of the South Orange County Community College District do hereby commend Patsy Emmert for her 29 years of outstanding service and unique dedication to Irvine Valley College and bestows upon her the Irvine Valley College Classified Employee Outstanding Service Award for 2007-2008. And this would be a roll call vote. Trustee Lang. Aye. Trustee Lang. Aye. 
Trustee Milchaker? Aye. Trustee Padberg? Aye. Trustee Wagner? Aye. Trustee Williams? Aye. Student Trustee Lee? One more time. There we go. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Patsy Emmert for getting this award for the Outstanding Classified Employee. Well, well deserved. Uh, Patsy, here's a token for your desk. Thank you. And if I can, quickly, I know that there's something in here. I believe I know what it is, but I'd better read it. Here we go. Uh, this is, in fact, a complimentary Orange County Community College District parking permit with a designated space uh, just for her, just for Ooh, you, fun. as well as your resolution. That's worth it. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. Let's see. There's, there's more in this bag of tricks. Here we go. And it looks like a special gift for you. It's a hundred dollars United States saving savings bond. And again, congratulations. Wow. Thank you. There you go. A point of order, Mr. President. I believe that we should um, swear in the student trustee if we're going to take our vote on these resolutions. So if we could move that up ahead. We'll, 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 get, to, we'll get to that. We, we can get that taken care of. <laughs> Who's next? Okay. Janice Mastrangelo. Am I saying that correctly? Am I close? <laughs> they gave me one with hyphens. I'm trying to... While Janice is uh, walking this way, let me also mention, Patsy, you, ha you get one more thing, uh, President Rockmore, uh, that she gets this plaque to hang in your office uh, for a year and then uh, we'll retrieve it so that we can continue the tradition of honoring classified employees in the future. This is the Saddleback College Outstanding Classified Employee of the Year. Whereas Janice Mastrangelo is an application specialist one in the Saddleback College Information Technology and is always ready to go the extra mile to help technology neophytes and technophobes alike, as well as experienced computer users who get themselves into a tight spot with new software or hardware glitch, always striving to help in every way that she can with enthusiasm. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees and the Chancellor of the South Orange County Community College District do hereby commend Janice Mastrangelo for her five years of outstanding service and unique dedication to Saddleback College and bestows upon her the Saddleback College Classified Employee Outstanding Service Award for 2007-2008. Congratulations, and this is a roll call vote, please. Trustee Jay? Aye. Trustee Lang? Aye. Trustee Milchaker? Aye. Trustee Patford. Aye. Trustee Wagner. Aye. Trustee Williams. Aye. Student Trustee Lee. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I really enjoy my job. It's it's a job where you get to meet a lot of people, and uh, another thing is when when you're working, uh, when you're uh, in an, any kind of a work environment, you have the opportunity to meet today people from all kinds of backgrounds. And I, I really like that because uh, right now I work with somebody who was in Vietnam when we were, you know, at war with them. And now I think what, what a great world we live in that now here I am working side by side with somebody that can share all these experiences with me and I can hear it firsthand. And when you're open-minded like this and you're willing to listen to people, you can make terrific friends. And I, I think that when you're in a work environment, it's a, it's a great opportunity to take advantage of those things of others around you that you don't, if you don't take the time to listen to them, you really, you miss out. And there's a lot of opportunity there. And thank you very much. Jan, we have similar. Yeah, oh, don't go away. 
We have similar goodies for you that uh, were given the IVC. Given Patsy, we have a little desk plaque for you to put on your desk to commemorate the occasion and the honor. And we also have in here a parking pass for the end of lot one. Which will be very, very handy for you. Uh, and uh, let's see what else is in here. A $100 United States uh, saving bond. And we also have the plaque which you can hang up in the IT building, and it'll have your, your name on it, as it does right here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would Mr. Paul Eric Austin please come to the podium? This will be the district outstanding classified employee. Whereas Paul Eric Austin is a lead warehouse worker in the district purchasing department and is, known as, and is known as an inspiring team leader and who has successfully taken the lead in anticipating problems and finding practical solutions to them, thereby reducing absences due to injuries as well as reducing the number of back injuries among his fellow warehouse staff. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees and the Chancellor of the South Orange County Community College District do hereby commend Paul Eric Austin for his 18 years of outstanding service and unique dedication to the district, Saddleback College, Irvine Valley College, and the Advanced Technology and Education Park, and bestows upon him the District Classified Employee Outstanding Service Award for 2007-2008. And this will be a roll call vote as well. Trustee Jay. Aye. Trustee Lang. Aye. Trustee Melchiker. Aye. Trustee Packard. Aye. Trustee Wagner. Aye. Trustee Williams. Aye. Student Trustee Lee. It is my pleasure to uh, recognize a, a district employee by the name Paul Eric Austin right here. Uh, you heard about him as to which department he works. He works in the warehouse, probably one of the most important departments because without them, we wouldn't have supplies and equipment and all, all of those kinds of things that we need on a daily basis uh, to, uh, to function. Uh, so, uh, Paul, here is a, uh, uh, a plaque and recognition and in honor you. of your service. And, uh, and likewise, you get uh, a parking permit in a very special place right in front of this building or wherever you want, I guess, and also a, a United States savings bond for, uh, uh, for $100. You can park anywhere you want. Uh, but you will be moving around all the time that uh, delivering. That's right. So uh, that is that. And then uh, we also have the uh, district services uh, uh, plaque here to uh, maintain your name here, your name is here for 2007-2008 as the outstanding classified employee of the year. Uh, and you can hang this anywhere you like. Right? <laughs> Congratulations. I'd like to call upon uh, the new student trustee, Hannah Lee, to step forward for the oath of office. Where is it? Here it is. Well, we've taken her vote a couple of times. Let's go ahead and make her an honest woman now. <laughs> Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Hannah Lee, do solemnly swear. I, Hannah Lee, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, to the Constitution of the United States and Constitution of the State of California 
and the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. Congratulations, Trustee Lee. Thank Welcome you. on board. Let's turn to public comments now and let me start with the staff with respect to the musical theater and see who would like to address us. Uh, Aiden DeGoro. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, with the announcement of it being a rumor of the musical theater program being canceled, please indulge me with what I have to say this evening. I'm here to support the musical theater program here at Saddleback College, as well as Car Dr. Carmen Dominguez. I'm an independent director choreographer of musical theater in Los Angeles and Orange Counties. I've worked closely with Carmen on several productions and have enjoyed greatly my association with her. In my professional capacity, I've come across so many performers who have benefited from this program as directed by Dr. Carmen Dominguez. It would be a shame to lose her influence in the education of those in the musical theater classes. Furthermore, I have attended several productions here at the McKinney Theater, which were under her musical direction, and I'm thoroughly content with her performance as a professional and an educational provider. It has been noted that every production, which includes students from this organization, as taught by Carmen Dominguez, has benefited greatly by their participation. I have noted that she inspires cast members and students to try harder and to work together as a group. And her position in, and her position in the musical theater classes should not be taken away, but rather she should be applauded for all her work that she has put into it. She has proven her obvious dedication to this program. In my observation, so many people have benefited from it. Moreover, I have found her to be a positive inspiration for many in the business. Consider the negative ramifications of eliminating this program, and from what I understand, perhaps a profitable income for the college. If you were to eradicate this program, you would be depriving so many from so much. I urge you to reconsider dismantling the musical theater program and reinstate it as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Consider it done. Kimberly Moreau, followed by Eric Jepson. And if the next speaker is, is still interested in speaking, come on up and get in line back behind uh, the current speaker, so we'll move it along. Hello. I would just like to say Carmen has been more than a teacher to me. Ever since I came here to Saddleback when I was 18, I was terrified of college, and I grew from a student who could hardly talk in the class to a student who could belt notes in front of hundreds of people, thanks to the confidence and schooling Carmen has given me. I know if you get rid of Carmen, I will no longer attend Saddleback because I feel no one can replace her. Carmen has made the musical theater department what it is right now. I would just like to know why our Dean Rocky is taking away from us and depriving future students from having the privilege to work and learn from a true professional. Thank you. Eric Jepson followed by Gemma Hobson. Good evening. Although I'm not technically a student of Carmen Dominguez's, I've had the privilege to work with her both on a professional level and on an educational level. Throughout my 13 years in the musical theater industry, I have never worked with someone uh, like Dr. Dominguez in my life. She truly brings um, a state of professionalism in every aspect of the word. And also, I came to uh, Saddleback and I just performed in Reefer Madness under the um, 
influence that it would be an educational process and I just want you to know that the only education that I saw being given out of everyone on that production staff was by Dr. Dominguez and really I think what's happening here is that we're forgetting what this really is all about and that's it's about the students and want to know why our Dean Rocky Safoni would want to get rid of someone who is so professional. Thank you. Gemma Hobson, followed by John Gopin. Hi, I'm Gemma Hepson. I'm here in support of Dr. Carmen Dominguez. I began studying in the musical theater department at Saddleback College in 1998, and I feel like I am speaking on behalf of Carmen's students from over the past 12 years when I say that it would be seriously detrimental to the college if she were to stop teaching here. I earned my theater degree at California State University Fullerton, and I found that, that I what that what I learned from Carmen at Saddleback far exceeded the education that I received there. I have now built my career from the inspiration and opportunities given to me by Carmen. I am a musical theater, dance, and acting instructor at the Orange County High School of the Arts and a professional director and choreographer in the theater community. I also came back to Saddleback College to teach stage movement in the theater department. I owe my successes to the education and drives that Carmen has given me. Like I said, I also speak on behalf of the countless successful theater industry professionals that Carmen has inspired and pushed to greatness. I've been asked to return to OSHA for my seventh year teaching there, and I have always sent my musical theater students here solely because of the musical theater department that Carmen has created. My mother, the resident youth theater instructor at the Laguna Playhouse, Jean Hillary, who is here today, has done the same. We, along with our many colleagues, will not recommend Saddleback College without Carmen continuing the invaluable instruction she has touched so many students with over the past 12 years. She's dedicated, talented, passionate, inspirational, and well-respected for her work in the theater. And I ask why the Dean, Rocky Safone, who has inadequate knowledge of theater, has made this decision. I am disgusted and appalled that the students will suffer because of it. Thank you. John Gopin, followed by Nicole Ellis. I would like to thank you, Mr. President, for your preemptive remark at the beginning of this meeting, but I would like, in case it isn't already apparent, uh, I would like to point out that we are here on the behalf of Dr. Dominguez and not the class or program exactly. So with that said, my name is Jonathan Gopin. I am from Boston, Massachusetts. I have been acting for six years with an average of four productions per year. While in Southern California, I have attended musical theater classes at both Irvine Valley College, our sister school, and Fullerton College. This was my first and most likely only semester at Saddleback College. I was looking forward to at least another semester under Dr. Carmen Dominguez's tutelage. The first time I caught wind of this situation was during Saddleback's last theatrical production, Reefer Madness. I volunteered to usher for a production and witnessed Patrick Fennell speaking to a student and dropping ominous remarks such as, a revolution is coming and Carmen won't be around next semester. I didn't know at the time and I am still oblivious as to why Dean Safani has made this decision. He couldn't have had my education or my best interests as a student at heart. Thank you for your time. Nicole Ellis followed by Daniel Berlin. Good evening. Um, I've been a student here at Saddleback for the past two semesters, and um, I'm here on behalf of Carmen Dominguez, and I'm here to ask why Dean Safoni made the, made the decision to replace her. And I'm pretty sure I'm here on behalf of everybody here, uh, wondering why that he made this decision, and that <laughs> giving no reason to us students who are involved. And, we were just shocked and ultimately just enraged to find that such a gifted musical director and instructor would be replaced. Carmen Dominguez's class was a place of professional growth and learning where I personally had become a more strong performer with many opportunities available to me. With the news of Carmen's leaving, I knew that there wouldn't be anything that I would stay in the program for. So again, I have to ask why Dean made that decision. Thank you. Is Carmen leaving? Not as far as I know. Does anybody know whether Carmen's leaving? Are you going anywhere? Um, it's not a matter of not going anywhere. It's, not a, it's a point of not being assigned to class. 
I just, I just want to make sure that what I'm hearing and I'm telling people is, is true. Okay, very good. Daniel Berlin, followed by Alexandra Godding. And I'm sorry, I didn't, didn't see you back there. Oh, Godinez, excuse me. I've attended several institutions and universities in my quest for education in the musical theater, from the American Musical and Dramatic Academy in New York and Los Angeles to Pace University, where I will be returning in the fall for my BFA. Yet, with all of the instructor, instructors I have had and all of the thousands of dollars my parents and I have spent, I have never had the educational experience that I have received learning from Carmen Dominguez. I was lucky enough to work with Carmen in the professional world at the Chance Theater in Assassins, where she was my musical director, the show which garnered critical acclaim for both Carmen and the theater. She then asked me to attend her class. At first, I was hesitant, wondering what I could learn in a local university with all of the education I had already had. Still, I went. It was possibly one of the best decisions I've made in my professional life. Carmen asks her students not only to watch, but to critique, not only to memorize, but to learn, not only to sing, but to perform at their fullest. She is quite possibly one of the well, most well-versed and inspirational teachers I've had the pleasure of working with. She is not only a vital asset to Saddleback, but to musical theater in South Orange County, and to remove the or the, her from the theater department will only hurt those who wish to learn. I've watched over the past few weeks as she has been beaten down and belittled by her colleagues as a campaign has been waged against her for no obvious reason. Yet with all of this, she has remained steadfast and true to her integrity. Never once has she made a disparaging remark against fellow faculty or the university. She remains an example of what a teacher should be and how a teacher should behave. I am only one student, but I, speak, I feel I speak on behalf of all students on a whole when I say that Carmen Dominguez is a teacher who will remain with us far into our lives. She prepares us for our future, not only in musical theater, but in the world beyond college. To remove her from the department is unfair, not only to her, but to her students. Thank you for your time. Alexandra Godinez, followed by Angela Rodriguez. Um, all of us students got an email from Ellen Price saying that, um, that she would be teaching next year for um, movement classes and that Carmen would be replaced. That's why we are all here. My name is Alex Godinez, and I'm a student that has lived and studied all over the world. I decided to continue living in the U.S. from the Philippines in hopes of finding a greater influence to my theatrical experiences. When my mom told me that I was going to take one semester in a community college, to spend more time looking for other theater schools. I was honestly upset, but when I entered FA 101 and saw my teacher, Carmen Dominguez, right then and there, I knew that this was going to be a class that I'd remember for the rest of my life. Carmen has brought me so much knowledge about not only being a great performer, but also the business. Being new in school, Carmen made it a point to make me feel comfortable in class. Carmen has given me so much confidence in myself. And because of Carmen's teachings, I've decided to take another semester in Saddleback to further improve my skills. I've seen so many of my classmates from the first semester come back in the second semester, a great performer, or even a professional from an amateur. I don't even have to explain how she has moved us all. I mean, if not, then why are we all here? Um, I'm living away from my family, and I feel like I found one in Saddleback Musical Theater. Please don't take Carmen away from us, um, the program. Not only does she take care of her students, but she actually cares about us in our careers. I don't even understand how that's an option that she's even going to be replaced. I mean, Carmen's one of those extraordinary teachers that one day, you know, there's going to be a movie written about her. And, they're, you know, really. And the, it's about a teacher named Carmen Dominguez that changed the lives of hundreds of students in a small musical theater classroom. Who's going to play Carmen? Thank you. I'm just, you know, we'll just, we'll just think about that for a minute. An Angela Rodriguez, followed by Krista Mayo. Good evening. I came to Saddleback with a very pessimistic attitude towards the theater program offered. But after taking Carmen's class and participating in the fall musical, my attitude quickly changed. She gave me a clear view on my talent and where I can go with it, from teaching me to walk and carry myself to keeping pitch while dancing. I never once felt unsafe or uncomfortable when I was in her class. I hate to say this, but knowing that there, is no, that there isn't a great chance that Carmen will be returning next year has forced me to look elsewhere to study my major. I stayed here for Carmen's class, and if it's not offered next year, then I'm not coming back. I felt such a personal growth as a performer under her direction, and I don't understand why Dean Rocky Safoni would get rid of such an influential instructor. Thank you for your time. 
Thank you. Krista Mayo, followed by Lindsay Renee Martinson. Ladies and gentlemen, Carmen Dominguez is the single best musical theater teacher I have ever had the pleasure to work with. And after being a part of her class for one year, I learned more than I did at the four years that I spent at a performing arts high school. My self-confidence has never been higher, and I've never felt so safe in a classroom setting. She really makes her class not about the competition and who's better than who, but it's a real learning experience and a real learning environment. After high school, I was accepted into several prestigious musical theater colleges, and I decided to stray from that path to study with her specifically. Um, I recently received an email from Ellen Prince, who said that she was taking over the musical theater cl class. And personally, I would never take a class under her direction just because during the run of Reefer Madness, which she was the choreographer for, she made me feel so insecure about my dancing ability and about my body image every day. And she made me cry on several occasion occasions. And the only reason that I got through the show and was able to face Ellen Prince every day was because of what Carmen told me about my talent and my place in the world. Exactly. The bottom line is that I wouldn't feel comfortable studying musical theater under anyone else here. I'd be forced to leave. Thank you. Lindsay Renee Martinson, followed by Nona Watson. Good evening. I will start by saying, as I know many of my close friends from class will agree, Carmen Dominguez is the heart and soul of the Saddleback College Musical Theater Program. I am attending this college only because she is an instructor here. I auditioned for the Rocky Horror Show two years ago, and that's where I first met Carmen. Living in Huntington Beach, I needed a good reason for, to be commuting to school so far away. Carmen was my reason. She has taught me more in the two years I have attended her class than the six years I attended the Orange County High School of the Arts. I have performed in three musicals in which Carmen has musically directed. She was always there to give direction to us, even when our other directors were out and about with their minds not focused on the shows. She is constantly helpful, teaching me more and more every time I attend her class or a rehearsal. Getting rid of her would be a crime. I already told all of my friends who are still in high school to attend Saddleback College for the sole purpose of taking class with Carmen. If Carmen is not a part of the program anymore, that's students from the Orange County High School of the Arts, as well as the Academy of the Performing Arts at Huntington Beach High School that will be choosing a different college to attend. Please take what I and my fellow students have said into deep consideration. We would not be fighting so hard if it was a program we did not believe in. Thank you. Nona Watson, followed by Drew Carmella, or thereabouts, and I apologize. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I've never taken a musical theater course here at Saddleback College. I'm a colleague of Carmen's. I'm a music teacher at the high school level here in Southern California. And when I'm telling my students the college programs they should choose for themselves and their futures, it isn't the classes that are offered in your book, it's the teacher who's teaching them. And I tell them to come here to Saddleback College and take classes from Carmen. She is dedicated, she is knowledgeable, and I know when I send my high school students to, here to Saddleback to study with Carmen, they're going to leave your school ready for the professional world. Thank you. Drew, who will pronounce his last name for us in a minute, followed by Emily Price. I'm sorry, how do you say your last name? Carmona. Sorry. Welcome, thank you. I'm here today to express my extreme dissatisfaction on the releasing of Carmen Dominguez in her position in the musical theater program. When I came to Saddleback in the fall of 2006, I knew I was coming into something that would change me for the better as an actor and as a person in general. I'm deeply saddened that they would, the school would rid her of her talent and I feel that we are losing a mentor, a coach, a gateway to the professional world, and most of all, an inspiration. I don't feel that I'm on the same guidelines as Dr. Patrick Fennell and Ellen Prince with our new program, especially when Ellen Prince had no business to send us an email explaining of what was to come in the new program, and especially with Dr. Fennell after he made a vulgar statement about my mother. I have enjoyed my experiences here at Saddleback College, and I ask Dean Safoni to please reconsider his decision to release her from the program. If this school wants to continue to be successful and make the money that she has brought in, I believe that success brings more success, and Carmen Dominguez is the success to bring it. Thank you. Emily Price, followed by Karen Ibarra. Well, I think it's pretty clear already that we're here not about the musical theater class being canceled, but we're here about the removal of a faculty member from that class. Uh, I'm speaking as a former graduate of the musical theater program. I began the program here in 1998, 
And I'm also now a working musical theater professional. I've been in nearly 40 shows since my time here. And I'm also a member of the educational community. So I, I really feel strongly when I say that the removal of Dr. Dominguez would be a travesty to the students that are coming to this school. Um, her focus, her unswerving determination to challenge students, to have students challenge themselves, to always be striving to be better. I think that you will lose that if you simply bring in someone else to replace her. And I think that if you're searching for answers to why this removal is happening, that you need to go to Dean Rocky Safoni, and maybe you should address Patrick Fennell as well. Because it seems strange to me that she's being removed for no apparent reason. And so I think that further investigation is called for after hearing everybody speak tonight. I think it's important that two people should not be determining the fate of all the students that would be coming to this school. I know many students that will not come here now, and I certainly will not recommend the musical theater program to students who are wondering where they should go. Uh, my 10 years of experience, I've also seen the CLO here at Saddleback be driven into the ground by mismanagement. I've watched it happen, and it's a tragedy and it needs to stop. Thank you. Karen Ibarra followed by Alana Rosenberg. My name is Karen Ibarra. I am the parent of Elise Ibarra. She has asked me to attend this meeting and read this statement. Hi, my name is Elise Ibarra, a third semester vocal major at Saddleback College. I apologize I cannot be here but I have a mandatory musical theater run through. But I had to get my voice out somehow. This, was my, this is my first semester in musical theater. I am a voice major that has been performing and loving musical theater from a young age. I was a musical theater major at California State University Fullerton, but left because the major lacked completeness. I found that completeness with a complete package of musical theater technique with Carmen Dominguez. She has worked hard with me to teach a caliber of performing I had never expected. She even worked together with my vocal coach, Scott Farthing, to team up to create a combination of acting and singing suitable to the classical and musical theater part of my voice. She has made me into a well-trained, more confident, happier performer than I ever was. She has the musical credentials and the theater experience that most instructors lack. I have seen an instructor who truly cares about her student's success, someone who knows what she's talking about, a woman who has been in charge of making my life um, uh, more successful in many ways. She has made the university acclaimed musical theater program that we know and love. This change in hands will be splitting up a group of amazing performers who have grown under this woman and to eliminate her in tearing down all the university's students and audiences, um, that would be a sad thing that they hold dear. Please keep her in the musical program as instructor. She has made me and hundreds of others a more happy and complete performer. Thank you very much. Lana Rosenberg, followed by Ken Woodward. Thank you. I'm here on behalf of two individuals who couldn't be here. I'm reading their letters. First, from a parent. I wanted to express my support for Dr. Carmen Dominguez. My daughter was a South Orange County School of the Arts student at Dana Hills High School prior to attending Saddleback. She is very talented in various areas of the fine arts, but her love is for musical theater. As she is responsible, she found that she never had the opportunity to develop her skills on stage while at DHHS. Too often she was needed more backstage, so she did not get stage experience. At Saddleback, under the tutelage of Carmen, I have seen Veronica's vocal skills blossom. In addition, Carmen has encouraged Veronica to build on her talents in a way that will help her in future endeavors. 
Our daughter has gone from being a voice in the back row to taking a leadership position. Veronica really needed the support and encouragement of a professor to take her skills to the level she has been able to attain while at Saddleback. I hope she will continue to be able to work with Carmen in the musical theater area in this coming year. It would be unfortunate if Carmen were not available to teach the musical theater classes. As a parent, I've seen not only my daughter but other students develop skills in Carmen's classes. She has developed this program into a top caliber program. I am sure that it is in part due to her tremendous musical skills and expertise. The musical theater productions, both the plays as well as the classroom concerts, are phenomenal. We have seen the excellent musical theater productions the past several years. They are professional productions, and I know much of this is due to Carmen's pushing the students to perform to the best of their capacity and beyond. Carmen supports her students and fights for them to do their best. Although I'm not a student, as a parent and supporter of the Fine Arts Program at Saddleback, I hope the board will reconsider its decision and retain Carmen as the director of the Musical Theater Program. Thank you for your consideration, Rhonda Jurema. I am writing to express my concern for the theater department at Saddleback College. If news of the Musical Theater Program's demise is correct and Carmen Dominguez's expert guidance, teachings, wisdom, and experience on the subject matter will no longer be offered, I am deeply saddened for the students of Saddleback. As a college educator and professional performance Fine, myself, you, wrap up. you will have a copy of this. Okay, thank you. Ken Woodward, followed by Nancy Nolan. Hi, good evening. I'm Ken Woodward. I'm uh, past president of the Faculty Association, and I had the pleasure to um, serve with Carmen last year when she was president of the Saddleback Academic Senate. I have a couple letters that um, reviews concerning a recent um, play that I had the pleasure to attend in Anaheim at the Chance Theater, uh, which was The Assassins by Stephen Sondheim. And as an economist who doesn't know very much about theater, I was really impressed. So um, I want to thank Carmen for introducing me, a colleague, to um, her tremendous skills as a musical director. And of course, we're all concerned here about her arbitrary reassignment away from musical theater. But most of all, I want you to just think about what you've heard, the tremendously eloquent um, comments by the students um, speaking to Carmen's tremendous talents. Um, <laughs> I wish that I could touch the lives as, as many, of as many students as Carmen has, and I urge you not to reassign her from musical theater. Thank you. And now for something completely different. Nancy Nolan followed by Paul Crary. Actually, I want to take a class from Dr. Dominguez. <laughs> Sounds like a really good time. <laughs> um, I'm here. Uh, I really didn't want to be here, because, um, but I have to be here because I didn't like the speech that you gave uh, Mr. Wagner at the um, awards ceremony. I thought it was extremely disrespectful and also contemptful. Um, I learned about what contempt meant in a class that I took recently this past semester with my daughter in one of the classes at Saddleback. And it was through a book that I was uh, asked to read th through the instructor. And what contempt is, is setting yourself above and someone else below. And when I heard your speech, I just felt like I was one of the ones that was below. And I thought that it doesn't have any place for the community college. I don't think it represents what Saddleback College should represent. And indeed, I don't think it does. And I don't know if that was your own personal idea to, to use the words that you did and especially the tone that you used. And in this world, we're finding more and more places that dialogue cannot be accomplished. And I certainly hope that Saddleback College will stay open to the public for more dialogue and not less. And that's why I came, even though I, I'm missing Jeopardy tonight. But <laughs> anyway, I hope that the board all the rest of you people on the board did not approve of the lecture that he gave the almost 1,000 people that were there, insulting the people. I was looking forward to going there because my kid was going to get some money. 
And then I left, and my ears were ringing, and my face was red, and I was angry. I am if you'd wrap up, please. It would have been nice if you would have wrapped it up sooner than you did, sir. Paul Crary, followed by Diane Crary. Obviously, I am not Paul. Um, I'm here on his behalf, as is um, Lindsay Nolan. She's here on the behalf of Diane Crary, Paul's wife. So, uh, Mr. President, if this is acceptable to you, since there are two of us, I would like to, I will stop in the middle of this letter and then hand it over to Lindsay. So if I go over the two minutes, However mark, the two you want to handle it. All right. So this is a letter um, that, that we were asked to read. This is to the Saddleback College Board of Trustees from Paul Crary who is the Chair of Speech Communications at Saddleback College, and his wife, Diane Crary, who is a Learning Disability Specialist, also at Saddleback. Dear members of the board, as we have done the past eight years, my wife and I recently attended the scholarship ceremony at Saddleback College in order to present the Charles R. Crary Memorial Scholarship. We award this scholarship in honor of my father, to returning veterans with financial need. Diane and I, particularly I as a Vietnam era combat veteran, find this opportunity to support our returning vets to be a privilege and a pleasure. In fact, we have recently decided to double our scholarship contribution next year, but then something happened that has caused us to begin considering whether or not there might be a better way to recognize our returning military students. We are, of course, referring to the very egocentric and mean-spirited remarks made by Trustee Wagner at the outset of the program. Following Mr. Wagner's harsh and bewildering comments, we, like most of the audience, responded with stunned silence. Then the recipient of our scholarship and his wife leaned over and said, what is that guy's, Mr. Wagner's, problem? That has no place here. My wife and I, as completely embarrassed representatives of the college, could hardly respond. We were shocked and dismayed that a night that should have been all about the opportunity for us as a community to celebrate the accomplishments of our students had to begin in such a negative and inappropriate fashion. We felt sad not only for the students, but also for their loved ones who had come to cheer and rejoice. In fact, I had students bring this up again the following week in class, and I found myself once more with no way to explain Mr. Wagner's inappropriate behavior. My students noted as well that through the magic of YouTube, this humiliating moment for Saddleback College has been made available to the entire world. Our goal here is not to tell Mr. Wagner what he has a right to say or to think. Having served as an infantry platoon leader in Vietnam from 1968 to 1969, and my wife as someone who has had to deal with the occasional fallout from that experience, had, has made us both highly aware of the sacrifices that have been made to, pr to protect that freedom. However, we would certainly hope that a person in Mr. Wagner's position would recognize that a ceremony meant to celebrate our students is not the proper forum to air his personal beliefs and vitriolic rhetoric. It's simply not reasonable to put our students and their loved ones between Mr. Wagner and his perceived enemies. We believe that what Mr. Wagner did was wholly inappropriate and that the board should take steps to ensure that nothing like this will ever occur again. Carla Westfall followed by Ronnie LeBauer. My name is Carla Westfall and I teach math here at Saddleback College. Several people have spoken and several more will speak to address Trustee Wagner's inappropriate comments at the scholarship ceremony. And I'd like to fill the listening public in on the events that inspired this protest. For years, the board has insisted on including an invocation at both the annual scholarship ceremony and at commencement, despite multiple requests that they cease this practice. Last year, the board received formal requests to this effect from the faculty of both colleges and from the students of Saddleback. I'd like to thank Trustee Lang for listening and replacing tonight's invocation with a very appropriate reflection. This year, the board received a letter from the legal staff of Americans United for Separation of Church and State. 
This letter focused on the scholarship ceremony and informed the board that the inclusion of an invocation at this event was clearly unconstitutional. In response, Trustee Wagner chose to make a divisive political speech in the middle of a ceremony meant to honor our students. For this, I ask him to make a public apology to the donors, students, and guests who were present at that ceremony. Should he fail to do this, I ask the board to pass a resolution apologizing to these people. The public should also be aware that Trustee Williams offered a formal prayer at commencement. While his words were less inflammatory than Trustee Wagner's, his action continued the board's attempt to impose their own religious beliefs on our community. You'll be hearing from a number of people tonight who are offended by these practices. Unfortunately, there are many other voices you won't hear. Numerous staff members and part-time faculty have shared with me their offense at your actions, but stated that they are afraid to speak up for fear of retaliation. When you act as if your faith is the faith of the entire community, you belittle and disempower those of us who don't share that faith. You offend many who do share your faith, but have a true respect for other beliefs. I cannot understand why you continue a practice that is so inappropriate and unwelcome. Ronnie LeBauer, followed by Diane Parks. I'm Kathleen Smith. I'm one of the uh, department chairs for ESL. And Ronnie LeBauer couldn't be here tonight, so I'd like to read her letter to the board. Trustee Wagner, you were asked to give an invocation at the annual scholarship event recognizing deserving students who are recipients of donated scholarships valuing $200,000, $220,000. This event, purely one of joy and celebration, honoring those who make our institution proud, began because of your invocation on a note of belligerence, divisiveness, and antagonism. How thoughtless to put your own grandstanding and politicking ahead of donor and recipient respect. This was not the time to condemn those who believe more strongly than you do in the separation of church and state. This was not a time to crusade, crusade, to crusade for amens. You did our college, our best students, their families, and our donors who give in the name of education, not in the name of religion, a disservice and a dishonor. The reaction of some of us in the audience who sat down during your invocation was muted because we did not want to turn this celebratory event into a political argument. The audience showed more respect than you did. However, now, as a result of your behavior and the college's continuing disregard of church-state separation issues at its events, I am speaking up and taking action. I will no longer be funding a scholarship through the Saddleback College Foundation, as I have for the past five years or so. I will choose instead to donate the same amount to other organizations that support students' dreams. I will be happy to reinstate the scholarship when Saddleback College once again begins to respect separation of church and state issues. Thank you, Ronnie Lee Bauer. And I would just like to add on a personal note that as ESL teachers, we are acutely aware of the importance of the separations between, between church and state. We have many students who have come here precisely to this country, precisely because they did not have that separation of church and state. It's time. If you could wrap up, Thank go you. ahead. All right. Diane Parks, followed by Carmen Mara Hernandez Bravo. Good evening. I'm a resident of Mission Viejo. I'm not a student of the school. But I can tell you I did have the opportunity to watch the invocation on the miracle of YouTube. And as somebody who was a student who put themselves through school, I worked full time. Somebody who achieved honors at the JC level as well as the university level. I can tell you that as I watched the reaction of the folks on that video, I was there with them heart and soul. To have thought that my honor ceremony would have been so blatantly misused for political grandstanding by a member of the board is beyond disgraceful. It shifted the focus of that event from the achievements and accomplishments of hardworking students, many of which are, I'm sure are also working full time, sacrificing, and working very hard to stay focused on our academics. It took the focus off of that and put it onto something that had no place in that conversation, in that event at all. I'm ashamed to think that that somehow represents the community that I live in and the tax dollars that I donate to this community to be used for such events. 
and I would strongly encourage the board to have a look at that tape, have a look at this from a different perspective, see the reaction of the people in the room, and really reevaluate what is the intention of such events. Is it for political grandsta grandstanding because you have the hostages that can't leave the room, that won't give up their moment? I would think not. You have a look at that tape and reconsider the intention. I would hope that you would reconsider any such future behavior. And certainly, Mr. Wagner, I would reconsider your own personal behavior. It was rather disgraceful. Carmen Mara Hernandez Bravo, followed by Claire Cesario Silva. My name is Carmen Mara Hernandez Bravo, and I teach Spanish language, literature, and culture in addition to advising eight clubs on campus. I was very concerned by trustee warning remarks at the scholarship ceremony, but I have come here tonight not only to share my concerns, but to pass on the concerns of students and parents who have spoken to me since that event. Students invited their parents to this event to share a moment of celebration and recognition. Instead, they felt disrespected because they felt that the invocation separated rather than united people. Many of my students are international students, and myself, as a Latina immigrant myself, I teach them that our adopted country embraces and celebrates diversity. How can I keep teaching my student when member of my own board of trustee make a statement that contradict these ideals? My partner and I have given $5,000 scholarship every year for the past several years. In doing so, we honor the student in two ways. They receive often much need funds and have an opportunity to be recognized at the scholarship ceremony. Because of students at this year's ceremony felt disrespected rather than honor, and because, because trustee Warner action directly contradict the things I teach my students about this country, we cannot in good conscience continue to participate in the school ceremony. We have no desire for our action to hurt the student. We will continue to donate the same amount of money to serve our college students, but we will do so throughout a separate non-profit organization and find a way to grant them the recognition they deserve. Many other donors have made the same choice. So far, our contribution of $20,000 will be given through other means. We would love to return to contribution through the foundation, and we will happily do so once we are assured that the board will respect the separation of church and state at Saraba College. Time. Thank you. Claire Cesaria Silva. Good evening. My name is Claire Cesaria Silva. I'm a professor of anthropology here. And um, I do think that the comments by Trustee Wagner were extremely divisive uh, at the scholarship ceremony, but I think the whole question of religious prayers at public meetings and ceremonies in the district are extremely divisive and disrespectful. And I get the feeling that many board members think that it's only a few disgruntled faculty members who are concerned about this issue. But this is not the case. As faculty members, we're in close contact with our students. And every year, after every one of these events, our students come to us, particularly students of other faiths, come to us and tell us how excluded they feel, how that this ceremony has basically been taken away from them because they no longer feel a part of it, because there is you know, the um, accepted religion versus all of the other religions that are held in this community. Um, the case to curtail religious prayers at scholarship meetings and convocations and the like and replace them perhaps by a moment of silence is a call to respect all faith and even to respect non-faith. And all of our students were equally a part of our college and our district. We're a diverse community and that diversity needs to be honored and respected. Thank you. Thank you. At this point, we will go to board requests for reports, and typically we start with Trustee Jay, but uh, I think I'll uh, exercise the uh, option of going first, and then we'll move to Trustee Jay. Um, yes, sir? I'm sorry, board reports. 
I'm not sure what I said, but board reports. Um, let me begin with uh, noting that this month I had an opportunity to attend the Saddleback uh, Awards Ceremony, you might have heard, and uh, also the graduations. Before I delve into the awards ceremony, let me start with my congratulations to the um, uh, colleges who put on great uh, graduation ceremonies under some extraordinary weather-induced um, um, circumstances that caused a lot of shuffling, but nevertheless got done, uh, got done extraordinarily well. With respect to the invocation, uh, let me assure everyone that uh, every word of that was mine. It was not the districts. It was not any students. It was not anyone but mine. And if you intend to blame anyone, uh, blame is entirely on me, and uh, if you choose to not give awards to Saddleback students as a result, that is certainly your choice, but I do want to make it clear, every word was mine, and I do not back away, nor do I apologize for any of them, nor do I intend to. Uh, a couple of comments I heard about contempt being some people putting themselves above and some below. It seems to me that the folks putting themselves above the majority are the few who um, want to stop invocations. Well, we have a long and honored tradition in this country. We have a long and honored tradition at this board of starting these events with invocations. And but for the efforts by some to put themselves above others, a uh, exercise in free speech that was given by me at the Saddleback College uh, award ceremony would not be necessary. I heard someone talking about dialogue. Well, with all due respect, it sounds to me like they want silence, not dialogue. I'm all for dialogue. Uh, but what, uh, what I'm hearing now is an effort to silence free speech. I hear that it was a clearly unconstitutional invocation. In fact, I have a constitutional law scholar who will disagree with you. And if you look at the uh, Americans United for Separation of Church and State in their letter, the fact of the matter is they didn't say it was clearly unconstitutional. They ended up saying it was a uh, gray area or words to that effect. And they urged and, and, and pass it out. And they urged us, while this gets resolved, to uh, not do an invocation. Uh, I chose not to accept their urging. Um, we hear this is not a time to crusade. Um, well, with all due respect, when freedom is, when the threat to freedom is at its greatest, that, I think, is the right time to act, not a time to sit silently. And finally, I will resist the temptation to bring to this podium next month the numbers of people, and frankly, the numbers were larger than the ones who spoke here today, who either have come up to me after the awards ceremony to congratulate me for saying what is on their minds, or who have since and seen the YouTube and uh, expressed their support for what was being said, not necessarily the um, religious connotation, simply the exercise of free speech. Our invocations are designed deliberately to be inclusive, not exclusive, and anyone who feels that they are excluded by what is being said at these ceremonies is simply not listening to the words of the invocation. That said, let me turn to Trustee Jay. We got a follow up for that, uh. huh? Uh, th thank you, Trustee Wagner. I just wanted to say on, on a very pleasant note, congratulations to you, Hannah Lee, on your election as a student trustee. Student trustees are a very significant part of this board. A lot of them have contributed a lot to the decisions of the board, and we're glad to have you with us. So uh, congratulations again. Um, just two other things, and I'll mention them briefly because they have been mentioned again and again. Um, two weeks ago, uh, two and a half weeks ago on a Thursday night, we all got together to congratulate Rich McCullough on his retirement. Uh, congratulations in this room have been spoken before, but it was a wonderful, wonderful occasion uh, to, uh, as we called him, uh, Dr. Saddleback, who, <laughs> who truly is the case with uh, Rich, even though he's not a member of the nursing department, a biological instructor for many, many years and uh, a real egghead, which we don't have a lot of in the community college. And of course, he's trained literally generations of nurses. So congratulations again to you, Rich, and, and we'll be missing you. Uh, we hope to see you back in some role here at the college. Uh, lastly, I uh, went to both graduations the other day, and there were lovely ceremonies, beautifully done. Uh, at 8.03 in the morning, uh, for instance, at, 
at Saddleback, the rain started to pelt down on the field. And um, our, our staff and our maintenance people got out there with other help from other people too, from other departments, and set up the whole gym in less than two hours so that uh, the students could uh, uh, graduate uh, under dry conditions instead of standing in a rainstorm. Same thing happened at Irvine. They had a little longer to set up, I guess, up there, Glenn, but you guys, both you presidents, did a wonderful job of dealing with a difficult situation. And uh, when California doesn't come through with balmy weather, uh, you guys rose to the occasion. So thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Padberg. Thank you. Uh, I did attend Saddleback's award ceremony, and I'm going to talk about that at the end of my uh, report. Uh, I also went to Dr. McCullough's retirement party, and congratulations to you, Dr. McCullough, and onward and upward, and enjoy your retirement. I understand you're going to be coming back. Um, I also attended, of course, both graduation ceremonies, and John Azurvich, could you just raise your hand and be recognized? Uh, you pulled it off with your staff in two hours to get us out of the football field and into the basketball um, stadium. Again, IVC had something like eight hours, but you still pulled it off, too, in your gymnasium. I also attended the KSBR birthday bash, which, uh, if you don't know, is a marvelous, marvelous event. And I encourage you all to go next year. We actually moved the venue to Mission Viejo this year, so I encourage you to do that. I was unable to attend IVC's Scholarship Award Ceremony because it's during the day and that interfered with my work schedule, but I did go to Saddleback's Award Ceremony. Um, none of the board members, to my knowledge, knew what Trustee Wagner planned. Um, I want to just state that he did not give an invocation. He gave a political speech. Um, I was offended. I think it put a very black mark on what should have been a joyous occasion. I apologize to all of the people at my table, and I would like to challenge Trustee Wagner at this point to personally make up for all of the scholarships we are losing because of your action. Trustee Williams. Well, it was a busy month. I won't go over the, all of the events, but I did attend uh, President McCullough's retirement uh, commencements. Uh, I didn't attend the scholarship award ceremony for Saddleback College because I had the pleasure of taking my son out for dinner on his 26th birthday. But having been on the board 15 years, and I've never missed a commencement. There's over 30 commencements. But this was a pretty classy picture in the paper, the Orange County Register. And I think we need to give credit to Tracy Daly in the district office. This is congratulations, a full page ad in the Orange County Register congratulating Saddleback and Irvine Valley students on their graduation. So once again, congratulations to all of the members of the 2008 class from Trustee John Williams and a member of Saddleback's class of 1971. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Milchica. Um, I, I also attended both graduation ceremonies, and I, too, want to thank, echo the thanks of my fellow trustees for John Ozerovich at, at Saddleback College and um, uh, um, Edwards and <laughs> John Edwards at Irvine Valley College for, for uh, really, at the very last moment, moving the graduation ceremonies from the outside venue to the inside venue because it rained, and it, this is the first time in my 23 years of being a board member at Saddleback College when I've ever seen it rain or it moved, we had to move it really last minute inside. And, and everyone, it was so smooth and so, so beautiful that I really have to give thanks to the staff for doing such an excellent job. Um, I've, I've attended, um, I've been on the board 22 years and never missed a graduation. So I've attended, uh, uh, let's see now, 44 graduations. And then at the 45th graduation, I myself graduated. Um, I was able to attain my, my AA degree in um, Spanish, I, thanks to my uh, profesora de español, Carmen Mara Hernández Bravo, who uh, handed me my diploma. Uh, I just want to um, recommend this to so many other people who are baby boomers, just like myself. And I, I had a, a talk with um, Jerry Rudman, who is a, a counselor at Irvine Valley College, how I myself have been a professor of biology at a community college. I was a teacher. Uh, I, I've been a research biologist working in orthopedic surgery research. And now 
I was finally able to return to the community college and get my AA degree uh, in Spanish, pursuing a whole new um, vocation, avocation, and uh, it opened a whole new world to me. I've taken many, many study abroad classes and have been to Spain and to uh, Costa Rica and to Peru and, and to uh, many, many uh, countries and been able to practice my uh, skills and also converse with many people in the area and opened up a whole new uh, way of getting to know many, many different people uh, from many different cultures living in our own area. And it's really uh, been a, a pleasure. Also, I want to commend uh, people for doing this because as baby boomers, as you get older, not, not really older, but as you get more mature, um, if you don't keep your mind active, you tend to lose your axons and dendrites, uh, the, the, the connections in your brain. So keeping your brain stimulated, and this means by keeping it stimulated in an active way, by learning something new, like learning a new language, uh, doing something uh, you've never studied before, will keep your brain growing and not only that, if you bring your credits here and you take a certain number of classes, you too can get an AA degree in a whole new, uh, um, whole new field. And I realize it's time, but I have to say that I now am in the Saddleback College graduation class of 2008, and I'm so proud. All right, of this. congratulations, <laughs> Trustee Lang. Um, I also like, would like to echo Trustee Jay's uh, welcoming remarks to our newest uh, student trustee, Hannah Lee. I uh, congratulate uh, Trustee uh, Milchiker as being part of the uh, class of 2008. Um, I also uh, attended and enjoyed uh, both the scholarship awards ceremonies at Irvine Valley College and at Saddleback College, uh, as well as uh, both commencement ceremonies. Uh, truly, commencement is the, uh, the highlight of the year, and um, in my humble opinion, and I just thought that um, uh, both college presidents, both President McCulloch and uh, President Rockmore, uh, and all of the faculty, um, administration, staff, uh, everyone just did a terrific job, uh, not only on the commencement ceremony, but just uh, throughout the entire academic year. So my hat's off to, uh, to both you and, and uh, everybody at the colleges. Um, and then finally, I also attended the uh, KSBR birthday bash as well which, uh, as Trustee uh, Padberg uh, mentioned, was a fun evening of uh, music, food, and revelry. So uh, very enjoyable, and uh, uh, would encourage all of you to come out for, for that next year. Thank you very much. And for her first report, our new student trustee, Trustee Emily. Okay. Um, I thought maybe I would begin by introducing myself to everyone. Um, my name is Hannah Lee, if you guys didn't already know. I graduated from Irvine High School. Um, I was the president of the Make-A-Wish Club, and um, I was also involved in student government. Um, I attend Irvine Valley College, and I'm taking a couple online classes from Saddleback. Um, I was a secretary of student government. I'm a member of the honors program and Phi Theta Kappa. Um, so that's me in a nutshell. And I did attend the um, IVC Foundation Scholarship Ceremony. And I actually received a scholarship myself, and it was great. And um, I went to the IVC commencement, too. And the speaker was really good. All right. Thank you very much. And the Chancellor's report. Uh, thank you, President Wagner. I may have a little longer report. Uh, I'll try to uh, keep it brief, nevertheless. Um, number one, uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome my student trustee, uh, Hannah Lee. Uh, nice to have you here. Welcome. Um, I think uh, there have been a lot of wonderful comments and congratulations regarding the, uh, the scholarship program as well as the uh, commencements. And I'd like to uh, recognize uh, President McCullough as well as President Rockmore and their staff in pulling together those two events on a short notice uh, in their gymnasiums. Um, John Morlock, uh, as you may know, uh, is the chairman of the Orange County Board of Supervisors, and he was the speaker at the uh, May 15th uh, Orange County Legislative Task Force meeting. So I'd like to uh, report on that uh, meeting briefly. He painted a, a picture of the uh, state budget based on consideration of the following factors. 
they all have been uh, in the news. Uh, declining real estate market, property taxes, sales taxes in job market, uh, current recession, increasing welfare and unemployment costs, court costs due to increase in crime, costs associated with employees' retirement systems, and also the rising costs of illegal immigration and the increasing exodus of businesses and workforce due to high state taxes. So um, essentially that was his uh, report for about 45 minutes. Trustee Fuentes, you notice he's not here uh, tonight. Uh, after his uh, operation, he uh, is resting and recuperating at home, and uh, he tells me that it is his goal to... Uh, and be attending the board meeting uh, in June. Uh, with respect to uh, Dr. Bob Kopecki, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Kopecki for your service. You are here in the audience. We would like to thank you for your service as uh, provost uh, of the Advanced Technology and Education Park. For uh, Dr. Kopecki's request, uh, he'll be returning to uh, faculty at Irvine Valley College as, uh, as a learning center instructor. Uh, and also, the uh, uh, board has agreed to grant uh, Dr. Kopecki uh, the provost uh, emeritus status, and for that we congratulate you. Thank you, Bob. Uh, finally, I would like to mention that, that uh, one of uh, the persons who has been very visible uh, at these uh, board meetings is uh, PJ, PJ Shamel, and um, he has uh, decided to retire from the uh, district. He has been our uh, technician uh, uh, with the recording and so forth. PJ, thank you for all, uh, all of your wonderful service for many, many years uh, for Salbat College as well as for the South Orange County Community College District. We wish you the best in your retirement years as you move to Mexico. That's true. And mm -hmm. I may have internet there, so through the magic of Granicus, I'll be able to continue to watch. Before <laughs> <laughs> all right. Please, please make sure to do that. <laughs> Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, PJ. That's it. Is that it? All right, thank you. And at this point, we will turn to board requests for reports. Any written requests? No? All right. Any board requests? All right. Consent calendar. I'm sorry. Discussion item is up next. Uh, item 4.1, the uh, Saddleback Basic uh, Skill and Student Success Initiative. Let me turn to the chancellor to introduce this item. Thank you. Um, tonight's discussion uh, topic is uh, Basic Skills Student Success Initiative. Uh, we all recognize the importance of uh, basic skills, uh, reading, writing, mathematics, and so forth. And uh, there's a major push on this uh, from the state, particularly from the Chancellor's Office. And tonight, to um, uh, help make this presentation, I'd like to uh, call upon Dr. Don Boucher, our Acting Vice Chancellor of Technology and Learning Services, to introduce this topic. Uh, and then Vice Presidents for Instruction, Dr. Rajan Wardian from uh, Saddleback College and Dr. Craig Justice from IVC will make the rest of the presentation. Dr. Boucher. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, as you can see from the slide that this uh, Basic Skills Initiative is a statewide initiative that brings both focus and funding to foster student success, as uh, Dr. Mather has indicated. The um, basic thing we're doing here is significantly transforming how we address and meet the needs of the basic skills in ESL students. And for the benefit of this particular project, basic skills are those foundational skills in reading, writing, math, learning skills, uh, study skills, English as a second language, all those skills that are necessary for students to succeed in college level work. And the activities that we can use the funding to support include organizational, administrative, instructional, and support services. The South Orange County Community College District received funding in the amount of nearly $267,000. And you can see on this slide, the funding was divided between the colleges based upon the basic skills enrollments. 
the colleges have planned to use the money in the categories that are indicated here. Um, each of the college vice presidents will speak to the process and methods that they used to allocate these funds and why they chose the various categories in which to uh, place their funds. The process was spearheaded by Dean uh, Jim Wright, who is in the audience right here, and Dean Kevin O'Connor, who couldn't be here tonight uh, after having undergone uh, a minor surgery on Friday. Uh, at first, we set up a committee, a 15-member committee, headed by the two deans, and the goal of the committee was to select best practices based on the strengths and weaknesses that have been established across the state and nationwide on basic skills itself. We wanted to create an awareness of what basic, the Basic Skills Initiative is. And uh, what the group did was to come up with a recommended plan of action that was going to be reviewed by the Academic Senate of Saddleback College, the Classified Senate, the four college planning groups, that is the Enrollment Management Group, the Campus Environment, Institutional Effectiveness, and Student Success. And finally, those recommendations were brought forward to the Planning and Budget Council that gave it its final approval. The key plan components included, among others, the formation of a basic ad skills advisory council. And in a little while I will tell you a bit more about that basic skills advisory council. And its primary goal is to ensure that we have a smooth transition from the kindergarten all the way to graduate school. We will be looking at the three intersegmental groups, the uh, K-12, the community colleges, and then the transfer institutions. The year-round faculty development program also will be established. We would want to have uh, development for providing basic skills information, skills and knowledge, and best practices that exist in the field of basic skills. The ultimate goal of this program is to come up with uh, an overall plan that will address basic skills not as a piecemeal approach, but as a holistic plan basic skills will be reviewed in the same light as we've used student learning outcomes, where all courses, all programs, all degrees, all diplomas have learning outcomes that can be measured, that can be evaluated, and based on those results, we are going to make the necessary adjustments. We will also, through the use of basic skills, reach a point where we can retain more and more students. All the research seems to be indicating that students do not graduate from college not because that they don't want to go to college or study. It's because they have major problems in basic skills areas, especially in uh, uh, written English, spoken English, and mathematics. And uh, as a result of this, we also expect to increase persistence. The planned action that we, uh, we will do at uh, Saddleback College, at the organization administration level, we're going to identify a faculty member who will work as a coordinator of basic skills operations. Then there will be an advisory council that will, be, that will consist of five discipline experts coming from uh, ESL, writing, reading, uh, library science, or competency in uh, online education, and counseling, and mathematics also. And what they will do is will review and also revise, if necessary, the developmental education course contents and the entry and exit skills. There will be lots of activities planned for faculty and staff development, opportunities to participate in college, regional, and state events, develop in-house workshops and presentations, and select speakers who will address our faculty. And finally, we'll be looking at some instructional practices for which Saddleback College is well known when it comes to basic skills. We're going to promote individualized student learning, that is the focus is going to be not on the teacher but on the learner. We'll be assessing all the individuals who will be requiring the basic skills and from there plan programs that will help them succeed in college. The learning assistance program will continue. More effort will be provided in the field of ESL developmental writing, developmental reading, information competency, and developmental mathematics. As a result of everything that we have done at Saddleback College, uh, Saddleback College was uh, nominated for the Hewlett Recognition of Promise uh, Award. 
we had a visit from the Hewlett uh, Recognition of Promise team, and the winner of the, of the award will be announced in uh, Anaheim in October. Thank you, Rajan. And uh, at Irvine Valley College, uh, the process that we followed uh, was closely associated with our strategic planning process. The Basic Skills Initiative is part of our Institutional Effectiveness Committee, which consists of 14 members. It's one of the five strategic planning committees for the college. Our action plan is closely linked, therefore, to the college strategic plan and its goals and objectives. Uh, we did a, re uh, a call for proposals, um, and the ones that got funded uh, were based on a competitive process that uh, was criterion-based, and each and every uh, proposal that was funded has a front-loaded research component so that we can assess how effective the project is in doing what it says it will do. The action plan looked at uh, many, many practices, including those of an organizational administrative uh, nature. Uh, we wanted to know uh, what will increase student success and persistence rates. We are looking at our uh, methodology in providing tutoring services uh, and moving in the direction of what's known as supplemental instruction, which is a highly effective uh, kind of tutoring that's closely supervised by faculty. We are looking at improved assessment and diagnostic tools, both in writing and in mathematics. And the English faculty have developed workshops that train faculty, particularly the numerous adjunct faculty that we have, to use a common scoring technique so that diagnostic tests can be cross-validated, uh, otherwise known as being normed, which is a very innovative um, approach uh, in the state. In addition to that, we reviewed the math assessment test and have implemented uh, recommended revisions already. There's been staff development for faculty in ESL to review best practices in English as a second language. This up and down the state of California is an area, ESL, is an area that everyone's looking at in order to streamline it and make it more effective. Uh, combined with our strategic planning initiatives at Irvine Valley College, we're looking at uh, an ESL Success Center, which is designed to promote success, persistence, and transfer as English second language students move through the courses and become our transfer students to university. In addition to that, in mathematics, uh, one of our math faculty has developed a two-week pre-algebra uh, series of course modules designed to meet specific needs of students so that they can move right into basic algebra and get over the pre-algebra uh, skill set deficits that they have at the current time. Our expected outcomes as a result of completing the basic skills um, initiative projects, we expect to have more accurate student placement in appropriate writing courses. This will increase student success in those writing courses. Math tutoring and needs-based pre-algebra curriculum will increase student persistence and success in algebra courses. That's an expected outcome. Our front-loaded uh, research measurement tools will tell us how well we have uh, succeeded in that a year from now. And then finally, uh, in the coming six months, the Department of ESL will redesign its curriculum so that student success and persistence rates uh, can also increase. Thank you very much. And uh, Rajan and I are standing by for questions. Questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, gentlemen, thank you. Welcome. You're welcome. At this point, we are at the consent calendar. Are there requests from the trustees to pull matters off the consent calendar? Trustee Padberg. Yes, thank you. 5.9, 5.11, 5.12, and 5.13. Sure, 5.9, 5.11, 5.12, and 5.13, the usuals. Move, All right. Move the ballots. Is there a second? second? Let's vote on the item. Trustee J. Oh, and the student trustee has stepped out. All right, let's, let's, let's take a voice vote. All in favor? 
Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Matter carries with two abstentions. <clears throat> All right. At this point, we will pull item 5.9. Trustee Padberg. Uh, yes, thank say? you. Absence. Excuse me. Thank you. One abstention, one absence. One abstention and one absence. Who abstained? Uh, 5.9 is a resolution for transportation assistance. And while I'm not really opposing this resolution, I'd like to have clarification on whether this is likely to be successful. And uh, we're apparently copying Rancho Santiago College, who developed a similar, um, a similar resolution. And I would like to know what the record is, since they obviously are ahead of us with this, in terms of whether they've been successful or not. Chancellor Mather. Yes, <clears throat> um, this matter was discussed uh, recently in the Orange County Legislative Task Force meeting as well, that considering the uh, gas prices and so forth, that we do whatever we can to work with the Orange County Transportation Authority to see if we can get some um, additional discounts uh, for student passes. Uh, in light of that, uh, the chancellors of all the four community college districts are it's my understanding they're taking up a similar resolution uh, to their boards for consideration and approval. And also, um, since Dr. Eddie Hernandez, who is the chancellor of Rancho Santiago Community College District, and, the, and he's a facilitator of the Orange County Legislative Task Force meeting this year, uh, he has scheduled a meeting with the director of OCTA. So all four chancellors have expressed an interest in uh, talking with uh, with the director of OCTA to see what can be done. So uh, this is something that we intend to try to do. I yes, I, I I very much am in favor of um, this revo resolution. I noticed that the uh, Orange County, as, you, as Chancellor Mather mentioned, the Orange County Legislative Task Force uh, has taken a position to um, ask the OCTA to give discounted bus passes to our students, the students that attend the community college. And with the incredibly high price of gasoline now, and our students are on fixed income, I think this is a very, very good thing for us to be asking OCTA to do. Plus, there's a number of students that for a variety of reasons can't drive and need to take public transportation. And this will accommodate all of them and hopefully bring them to our doors and, and uh, save uh, save fuel and uh, help the environment as well because um, less cars will be on the road. So I, I, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't. I mean, I, I approve this completely. Trustee Pepper. I'll make a motion that we adopt this resolution. Yeah, and apparently this will be used in uh, negotiations with the OCTA. Is that right. correct? All right. All right. <laughs> Moved and seconded. Uh, we'll know when it's in the consent calendar like this. We don't need to do it that way. All right. Let's vote on the item. And looking, there we go. And the matter carries unanimously with one absent. All right, five, make a motion. Given the five time. eleven. Uh, point of order, um, I move that we extend the curfew until 9.30 for the board meeting. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions, matter carries. All right, we're at 5.11, Krusty Padberg. Yes, I ask that this item be pulled, and uh, this is another uh, very usual trip to Florida that usually only one trustee attends, and I will not support this item. Is there second. A, all right, let's vote. And matter carries with one no vote. 512, Trustee Padberg. I ask that this item be pulled. This is to pay Trustee Fuentes. We'll have an identical item to pay Trustee Milchecker, who was absent due to a family illness. And of course, Trustee Fuentes was absent due to an illness. I think that in terms of public disclosure, these items need to be recognized individually and votes taken individually for this. Approval. Second. All right, let's vote. Matter carries with one absence. Matter carries unanimously. And finally, Trustee Padberg, item 513. 
Yes, my comments for this are similar. This, I think, in terms of total transparency, should be voted separately. All right. Moved and seconded. Let's vote. <coughs> Trustee Melchior. I abstained. I tried to abstain. Good for I, you. I, I tried to abstain because it's me that they're that they're Good voting on. So the only reason. <coughs> Taking right. voice can, can you clear it and try again so we can get a record of it? All right, let's vote on the item. There we go. <coughs> item six point one, consolidated elections for members of governing board. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Vote on the item. Item six. That was quick. Carried unanimously, I assume. <laughs> That's all right. It carried unanimously, right, gang? Yes. All right. Wow. 6.2. Someone wants to get out of here quick. Is there a second? Second. All right. Discussion. Very good. The item is accepted for review and study. Item 6.3, also for review and study. Move acceptance. Is there a second? Yes. All right, let's put 6. All right, let's put 6.2 to, to, to a vote. All right. 6.3 for review and study. Moved and seconded. Moved and seconded. All right. Discussion? Seeing none, let's vote. Yeah. Trustee J. Okay. Matter carries 6.4, also here for review and study. Second. All right, let's vote on the item. Matter carries unanimously. All right, board policy revisions. These are here for approval. This is item 6.5. Second. Dis discussion. Trustee Melchior. I was, I was wondering. Um, what was the reason uh, for changing uh, board policy 5300 on the grading policy, for changing the um, credit no credit to pass no pass? Um, I noticed that it's being uh, changed in um, every single uh, article of this particular grading policy, and I just wondered if, if there's a reason for doing this. Let's, let's turn to Deputy Chancellor Porter. Yes, all of these changes were made uh, because of changes in the law okay. and regulations, and so this is just to reflect that. Okay, Trustee Padbert. I'm sorry, you through? Trustee yeah, I would. All right, Trustee Padbert. Uh, I have a question for our Deputy Chancellor. Usually, courses that have been taken as no credit, we have not been able to get any funding for, um, for that particular student's attendance in those classes. Will this change that, and will we now get funded for the we'll student attending the class? May, may I speak to that? That's a grading option, not a credit or no credit class. Is that what you're speaking to, the grade? Well, my understanding was that if a student enrolled at no credit and took the class for no credit, we would not get state reimbursement for That's that. That's different than the grade. Uh, a student can take oh, the I class see. for credit or no credit, which means that if they receive a passing grade, they would receive credit for the class. If they get a substandard grade, they would get a non-credit or no credit. But that has nothing to do with how many credits they get or units. I understood this policy to be changing that. It's changing. Am I mistaken? Isn't it changing the grading option? Changing grades. Yeah, it's changing the grading option. But it still gives you the option to take a course no credit? I know. It, it's not, the, I think you're referring to a non-credit class. We're referring to credit classes, and this is a grading option within a credit class. So it's I not see. changing uh, the I funding I issue. <laughs> I know it, it's confusing, confusing to students as well. So. Yes. <laughs> Trustee Melchior. Wait, 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 Bill, Bill, wait, please. Trustee Melchior. So from now on, sorry. From now on, the students on, on their um, transcript rather than having either a credit or a no credit will have a pass or a no pass is that that's what as i understand it you, yes. you know i i really um no it's a, it's 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 a board of governor direction but um i think a number of students including me sometimes take class courses credit no credit because 
Um, we just don't want to have to worry about a grade. We want to take the class. We want to pay the money. It's required by law to pay the money to take the class, but yet we don't want to work for a grade. Now, I, I've taken all my Spanish classes for grades, so, but, but uh, there's in another discipline, let's say, you want to explore something else. And I, and let's say you, you can't complete the class for whatever reason. If you take it credit, no credit, if there's a no credit on your um, transcript, it doesn't really look uh, you know, it doesn't look like it's a negative to me because it looks like you just didn't get credit because you, you dropped the class or you didn't show up. But if it says no pass, it looks m more like a pejorative or, a, 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 you know, something that's uh, like a fail. And I, I think it looks worse on your transcript. So is there anything we can do to get this changed around again to make it credit, no credit for people that just want to take a class and not have to get a grade for it? You want to speak to that? that the board's job or <laughs> I don't know I'm just asking personally that's the way I feel about it I would if the board wants to do that I think we have to take measures to, with the Board of Governors of the California Community Colleges to get them to change the regulations okay well, we'll have to think about that okay thank you trustee Jay did you want to uh, yeah how do you count uh, pass and no pass uh, in terms of a GPA it, Does it, anybody it's know? not entered into the GPA. What's that? It is not entered. Even if it's yeah. credit, it doesn't enter into the GPA. Right. Hmm. However, many universities look at your your uh, credit and will give you a C grade when they're computing your grade point average. I'm sure a lot of students would not take credit then if they realized they were going to get a C. Yeah, yeah. Would kill their GPA. Hmm. All right. Further discussion? All right. Let's vote on the item. Matter carries with one no vote. Item 6.6. .6, these are here for discussion and if the board is so inclined, approval. More policy revisions. Second. All right. Any discussion? Okay. Is there a motion for approval since there's no discussion? That was for discussion. Is there a motion for approval? All right. Yes. Very good. Understood. All right. Let's vote. Matter carries unanimously. 6.7 here for review and study. More board policy revisions. Second. Discussion on any of these items? Seeing none, let's vote. Matter carries unanimously. We're at 6.8 here for approval of contract with Nudizic LLC. Is there a second? second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Trustee Jay. Um, my, my concern is uh, where do we stand on the 50% compliance law? Uh, uh, where do we stand on the 50% compliance uh, giving the information that we've collected this evening both in open and closed session? The answer to your question is we won't know until the end of August when the books are closed. <laughs> well, I'm going to vote no on this then because it, it's not it's not education as far as I can see it. Okay. It's uh, di yeah, okay. it's district student development, and I'd, know, I'd rather count it next year's budget than this. I, I just, okay. I'm just okay. wondering. Okay, okay. This, this is uh, the project that was uh, approved by the board more than two years ago. I know that. For a five-year program to update all of the software in the district. This is the next phase, and each year we do a new contract to define which, what needs to be done in that year. So this is a, a third, I guess it's the third year, the, the third phase of that program. Okay. Trustee Lang? Yes, I think uh, Trustee Jay actually makes an excellent point, and that is and maybe I can rephrase the question to ask, is this an expenditure that would count against us under the 50% law? And would that be a reason for not approving that perhaps until, say, July, the next fiscal year, rather than within this fiscal year, if the numbers are close? Well, uh, the expenditures will be in the next fiscal year. It won't be in this fiscal year. No, no, but when, I mean, if we approved it tonight, would it not count as a? No, the, it, it counts when the, ex, when the bills are paid. Okay. 
Right, so it would affect next okay, year. Okay, but the question the still stands. The, the, question, the answer to the question is it counts against us for the 50% loss. Okay. All right. And you're saying that this is going to be billed in next 2008 and nine. Right. This, this is a whole year's worth of software development work yep. that will take place until next June. And so bills will be paid assume probably monthly during that time. But when are we going to pay for it? Uh, monthly during that time. Next year. Next, ne fiscal next year. Next year, for sure. <laughs> well, it's not going to be this year because the work hasn't been done. Okay, okay. okay. Gotcha. Um, let me, I'll, I'll support it then. Right. Yeah, let, let me... Trustee Lang, follow up? I, I think what we're concerned about, which are the concern that you're hearing from the board, is that we just would like to know that you and the people in your department will be monitoring the situation closely to try and um, ensure that we will be in compliance um, with the 50% rule. Right, and we're doing everything we can, including uh, hiring 30 or more faculty for next year that will come positively. And including managing when you would pay certain bills, uh, perhaps, yes. Uh, yes. to the extent that's within your control. Right. Okay. All right. Ch Chancellor Mather. Uh, we have uh, a district IT uh, associate director here, uh, Jim Gaston. Jim, could you please come to the podium? Do you wish to add anything? No. Board's approved. Going to approve it. Okay. okay. Um, no, you know, I, I understand the the uh, concern about the expenditures. This is money that's actually already been set aside. We're not seeking new money. This is all money the board has set aside in prior years. This is year three of a four-year project. And it comes from basic aid money, which I didn't think counted against us in the 50%. So, um, but Gary would know that more than I would. So. Trustee Lang. I think the only other concern which was expressed previously is, as I recall related to this contract, there was a, um, an increase in fee and a reduction in scope. Uh, in terms of what the, the final deliverables that we would get under this contract. And I think that was the only other concern that I had previously mm -hmm. expressed related to this. And perhaps you'd like to comment on that a bit? Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't so much an increase in fee as we had originally planned on it as a four-year project. We actually have moved the, the – um, we've accelerated the delivery of the system. And so rather than pay $4 million um, – uh, or $3 million or once a year over a four-year period, we've actually accelerated it. So the first three years are going to cost more than that. But under the current schedule, we will still deliver the um, promised functionality within that and within budget. The year two modules are scheduled for delivery by the end of June. And the year three, we anticipate, will pretty much wrap up almost the entire system with some minor cleanup in year four. Okay. But was I not correct that there was some – reduction in um, the ultimate scope of the project from what we had originally envisioned when we embarked on this um, many years ago. Yeah, well, the, the original um, provision that, that Alan McDougall brought to you was we needed to get off of our existing system because of aging hardware. When we started it and we started the first design sessions, people had lots of wonderful ideas that we would love to do that are simply out of the scope. So after, we realized that after the first year, and so we had to scale back quite a bit on the, the additional things people wanted. But as far as the original vision for this and the original justification for your funding of it, we will still deliver that within the four-year period. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Trustee Jay. I'm still concerned because it says status for 2008-9 contract, Exhibit A, identifies eight components for Phase 3 of development at a cost of $4,150,000. Mm -hmm. I just want to know, when is that going to be paid? It says the $4,150,000 for 2008-9 is, is, uh, is, is uh, uh, approved for phased development of the information. But I'm just interested, when is it actually going to be paid? Is it going to be paid before July 1st 
or after July 1st. And I don't know, I don't think it's clear from this. Well, I think the Deputy Chancellor has responded to that by saying it will be after July 1st. Yeah, this is a contract for the next fiscal year, not for this fiscal year. It's for work to be formed at the, performed at that time, billed at that time, paid at that time. Okay, but it will not be paid before July 1st. That's all I want to hear you say. No, there's no prepayment of the contract. Okay, okay, good, uh, got it. Okay, I'll support it. Let's vote on the item, seeing no more requests to speak. Oh, I'm sorry. One very uh, Thank you. quick uh, clarification. There was a comment made about does basic aid funding count in the 50% law calculation? The answer is yes. Uh, the only time that it does not is if it's capital outlay that would be made out of another fund, not the general fund. Thank you. Vote on the item. Matter carries unanimously. 6 9, here for approval of consultant agreement. Move approval. Second. Discussion, Trustee Jay. I've still got the same question on this. Is that 135000 to be paid before July 1st, 2008, or after? Um, that one would be paid after, but it's out of the capital outlay fund, and so it won't count for the 50% loan. Thank you. Loan. That's all I need to know. Vote on the item. Matter carries unanimously. 610 to adopt a resolution. Go ahead. Discussion? Seeing none, let's vote on the item. Well, that's a roll call resolution. There's a resolution on the trust fund. Yeah, let's go ahead and do this since it is a resolution by roll call. Madam Secretary, if you call the roll, please. Trustee Jay. Aye. Trustee Lang. Aye. Trustee Milchiker. Aye. Trustee Padberg. Aye. Trustee Wagner. Aye. Trustee Williams. Aye. Trustee Lee. Aye. Thank you. Item 611. See no request to speak. Let's vote on the item. Trustee Padberg. All right. Matter carries unanimously. 612. Discussion, Trustee Jay. Uh, the hundred and fifty-two thousand is this is this is uh, capital outlay. Okay. So therefore, it would not count. Correct. Okay. Thanks. That's all I need to know. Thank you. See no further requests to speak. Let's vote on the item. The matter carries unanimously. Six thirteen here for approval. Move approval. Is it moved and seconded? Discussion. Vote on the item. Matter carries with one no vote. <clears throat> Six fourteen academic personnel actions here for approval. Are there changes, Deputy Chancellor Porter? There is one on page six, item D two. Uh, there needs to be a correction for the name and a little <laughs> bit. Further down than midway, the name that's there now is Mary McDonald, and it should be Donna Gray. Move approval with that change noted. Second. Further discussion? Let's vote on the item. Matter carries unanimously. 615 personnel items. No revisions. All right. Move approval. Discussion. Second. Moved and seconded. No discussion. Let's vote. 616. Grant acceptance. Oh, matter carries unanimously. 616. Second. Discussion. All right. Let's vote on the item. Matter carries unanimously. 7-1, information item. Questions or comments from the board? Second. Trustee Padberg to address the motion. I wasn't going to address the motion. I was trying to get your attention for 7.1. And I was this doing what I normally do, which is taking motions to approve first. Therefore, since I didn't see you, what would you like to ask? 
I don't want to ask anything. I want to make a comment, if you please, that this is a momentous occasion, 7.1, and I want the public to recognize that we are paying off our cops' debt with this item. We are debt free. Well, we are not paying off our cops with this item. This is merely an information item that we've already paid off our cops' Correct. debt. Correct. Trustee Jay. Uh, I have the same question again. This is a big item, and I want it paid off. Believe me, I've been looking forward to this date. But I just wish it was July 1 instead of June 1 because of the the 50% compliance law. It's it's out of a different fund. It is out of a different fund. Yes. So it will not count No. where we don't want it to count no. in the in the fraction. Okay. That's all I want to know. I'll support it. I've heard a motion to accept all the remaining information items. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? The matter carries unanimously. The rest of the information items are accepted. Let, let's turn now to the written reports. And uh, we will begin with the president of Saddleback College. I have no further report. Thank you. President of IBC. I will let these stand, uh, but uh, thank the board members and uh, Chancellor for attending our scholarship ceremony and commencement. Appreciate it very much. All right. Let me work my way down. And Ms. Dixon, any report? Um, not really. I did want to say that um, Shannon Morehouse had to leave on a family emergency. Um, and I was going to say happy birthday to her, but she had to leave. Today's, today mm -hmm. is her actual birthday. All right. <laughs> well, happy birthday, and we certainly wish her and family well. And Professor Haggerty. Thank you, President Wagner. I'd just like to report that the Fox Association is in uh, constant negotiation with the district, and we're looking forward to, after a year's negotiation, resolving the contract and uh, getting a fair and equitable contract for the faculty. Thank you. Thank you all. We are done. Drive safe. <laughs>